Hello everyone, this is Lauren Bragg from simplypaleo.com and I'm here in my kitchen uh, giving my very first cooking class on camera with my good friend Shelby Sim and Bruno Ferrarotti of 805 Productions. 805 Productions and I have tons of lights and crazy equipment in my kitchen and this is wild and it's the first time so we are going to do a four course meal for you and this is normally how I would do my cooking classes without the camera stuff. So you are getting in on a very private event. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's have some fun. So there's not much better than cooking. Shelby, we're going to start with a cocktail because it's part of the cooking process. It's part of the party and it's part of entertaining. So Fantastic. Do you like gin? Uh, I've never had gin. Before. Never had gin before. <laughs> oh. That's crazy. All right. Yeah. So today we're going to make uh, something that I call rosemary rush. And it's important to note that the paleo lifestyle isn't necessarily about drinking. It's kind of on the no-no list. But if you are going to drink, there are some better choices that you can make. Like fresher ingredients, um, things like soda water, flavored you know, mineral water fresh fruits and vegetables and herbs, things like that. So we're gonna make the rosemary rush. It's a gin fizz with a honey, simple syrup and rosemary mix mm -hmm. and coconut mineral water and some fresh lemon, super wow. easy. So right. uh, we've got two uh, mason jars here with some ice and we're just gonna do about a three second pour in each of them. One, two, three of gin, easy. We're gonna do a squeeze of lemon you want to do the next one? Sure. I know you do. Okay. Yes, I do. Okay. All and right. your three seconds was pretty quick, but <laughs> still. Well, we can add a little healthy. more. You so have to good. taste it before I've never you had buy it before. Off on it. Absolutely. So we're gonna do this. All right. Okay. So. And what's that? This is um, something called simple syrup, and it's really easy to make. A lot of simple syrup is made with white sugar. And why so, do you make simple syrup? It's basically just sort of a more liquefied version of sugar that's easier to use in cocktails. So, so you don't have to spend the time right, trying to dissolve it. Right, stirring and dissolving. So this is actually local organic honey. And it is half honey, half water. And then I boiled a rosemary sprig in with it. So it's rosemary infused simple syrup with honey. You boiled the rosemary within the juice? Within it. Oh. Yeah, so really easy. It's just to add a touch of sweetness. If you look, I'm going to add next to nothing. Just a splash. So after we've added our simple syrup mix, uh, we're just going to finish off with coconut mineral water. And this brand is called LaCroix. It's wonderful. They have all different flavors. There's Coconut is the best. It's just a hint of coconut. The ingredients are just mineral, mineral water and natural flavor. So there's not a lot going on. No sugar, uh, no added anything like that. So just going to finish these off. Is there real coconut the in there? Um, you know, the natural flavor is kind of a question mark, but there definitely okay. is a natural essence of coconut. All right. So, so, so let's look at the sugar content here. Zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So, and there's no aspartin or aspartame. Yes. Yes. So it's less evil. Yeah. Gotcha. Of course. Okay. So we're going to fill it up with that. And then the biggest thing that you want to do for your guests when you are making cocktails is to make them pretty. Go ahead and stick the rosemary straight through the middle of the lemon. And then we're just gonna give it a little cut here and we will put that on the outside of the glass. Voila. That is amazingly delicious. Amazingly it delicious. really is, <laughs> absolutely. Good. So simple, easy, garden fresh ingredients. I, I, I feel like I still haven't had gin. You put a healthy amount in there, but the <laughs> coconut water and the simple sugars yeah. and the simple syrup, simple syrup. And, the, and the lemon, amazing, Good. delicious. Cheers. Cheers. So now that we have our beautiful cocktail, let's let's cheers again to that. Um, we're gonna Amazing. make a really easy recipe for yeah. appetizers. Um, what we are doing is we're gonna do a cucumber brochette with prosciutto and pear salsa. Fantastic. And where'd you get this stuff? So this is all from the farmer's market, everything except for the prosciutto. Okay. Farmer's market is my grace land. So I try and get everything from there if possible. Why? Because I know the farmers and I know where the products are coming from. Okay. That means less packaging. That means less shipping time. That means less shipping, you know, fossil fuels to get it here. And I know that I'm supporting my local farmers. 
Fantastic. A so, lot of good reasons. Good reasons, yeah. So this is so easy. And um, I basically, in this dish right here, I took pears. I took uh, Asian pears and a red bell pepper. It smells. I can smell that. Amazing, Man. right? Yes. A, one green onion and a little bit of ginger. So uh, this was just super easy. Lemon, pear, red bell pepper, green onion, and a little bit of ginger. Can I have a bite? Yes, just take a spoonful. I feel like I could just yep. eat this. And this is no salt and pepper or anything yet. We're gonna add that in mm. just a second. This is a pear salsa. So yep. what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you take a piece of cucumber. All right. We'll take a piece of prosciutto. All right. And then take a little scoop of the pear salsa. And then we'll just do a little crank of fresh ground pepper. Wow. And a little crank of Himalayan sea salt. Mm. And once we did all those, they would just kind of be laid out like that. <laughs> <Flip it over. laughs> all right, let's do that again. I'm going to eat one with you because I'm hungry. Okay. So there's that. And then I'm going to skip the salt and pepper, but. Mm hmm. Mm. And voila. And we all know that organic and or fresh farm to table local stuff tastes so much better. It does. And so the flavors in this is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Just, just. It's a party in good. your mouth. Absolutely. It's a party in your mouth. Yeah, yeah let's cheers to And that's that. the goal. <laughs> Absolutely. Good. One of the most popular flavors right now is salt and caramel. Salt and caramel. caramel. It's yeah. wonderful. It's just Where kind of. Where did that come from? It's exactly. Yeah. It's just got one of those, yeah. one of those flavors. Look at that. Amazing. It's that beautiful. Looks. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's fun. Good. Okay, one Good. More. Let's do it. All right. Pear salsa, really easy to make. Ingredients are simple and fresh, and you probably have most of them in your kitchen. We have Asian pears, about a cup of Asian pears. We have one half of a red bell pepper, diced, and we have one sprig of a green onion. We have about a half of a thumb size of ginger, which has been peeled and is minced finely, and then a squeeze of half of lemon. So you've got some juice in there, and it sits overnight or even a couple hours whichever but the flavors marry together and it turns out to be fresh and wonderful and sweet and tart so there's not much better than cooking Okay, so we're on to the main course, and this is gonna take about an hour and a half to bake, so we wanna make sure that we start and get this going as soon as possible. What have you done to this chicken? So this chicken is not your average chicken. It's a fresh, free-range chicken from a local farmer. This chicken has been brined, and brining is a simple technique of basically adding a source of salt and adding a source of sugar, and uh, letting the chicken soak in a refrigerated environment for eight to 24 hours. So what I did is I just had a big boiling pot of, of water and, uh, sorry, a small bit of water that's boiling. Big boiling pot. Big boiling, it was a big <laughs> pot, but I had a small little amount little of water. water. Okay, a little bit of water. And I added uh, the juice of four oranges and I added a cup of salt. To the brine or the so that's, soaking. That's to start it. Okay, so that's in the bottom the of the pan. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. So then I just plop the chicken in and fill the rest up with cold water because you don't okay. want it to like cook in the boiling water. Right. So we added cold water and then I set it in the fridge and I started this at about 9 a.m. this morning and it is 7.45 so at this point. So same day though. Same day, yeah. So you're setting it up before work. Yep. Throwing it in your refrigerator. Yep. Now we're home. Clearing a shelf. Okay. Yeah. And this is my hands down number one chick, uh, trick for making moist, juicy chicken. So what we're going to do now, and this is another one of my big philosophies, is to get our hands really dirty. So we got to get all up in this chicken. <laughs> we got to add butter. We got to add blood oranges. And we've got to get this ready to go in the oven. Otherwise, we'll never eat. Breast. Breast. <laughs> Breast. <laughs> Belly. Belly. There you go. <laughs> Blood oranges, these are from the farmer's market as well. I usually use four to six, so I've got six here. We're gonna come back to those in just a minute. Now what you're gonna do, let me show you a little trick, and it's gonna feel naughty, but it's okay. You're gonna take your finger and you're gonna separate the section between the skin and the actual chicken breast. And I'm gonna let you do the other side. So just be gentle. It was way better watching you do that. <laughs> just go ahead and put your finger in there and make a little bit of space. And 
See, that's wonderful. And it's, you you did a great job. You to be too naughty. You did yes. a great job. Thank yes, you. it is Thank a dirty you. process. So I have pastured butter, and it's from grass-fed cows, and it's wonderful. So no what we're going to do... salted. No salted, just, you know, just nice, good quality, organic grass-fed butter. So we're going to use this entire stick of butter... It brings me to a really good point where I You're want to... you keeping breasts moist. They're, they're moist. I hate the word moist. I just... Okay. Moving on. So... What's your alternative word? I don't have one. That's the worst. <laughs> there is no alternative to well, that terrible word. now all I want to say is moist. Yep. So I'm going to let you do the other half and you're going to just... Moisturized? It's moisturized, yes. So go ahead and put the butter it's as far in as, as, as you can. All right. Yep. As far as I can. Yep. It's really, there's no there's no way to not just take this out. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. So we're going to save two, and we're just going to make a little snip on the legs because the leg meat is really wonderful. And it's dark meat, and it's delicious, and I don't feel like these should get neglected. So I'm also going to make a little hole here and make sure that I can just get a little bit of butter in there too. So try that one. And you can make the hole a little bigger if you need to. <laughs> I can't okay. Eat a snort. Okay. okay, so after this, we are not going to salt the chicken because we've already put it in a brine. So it's got a nice, uh, you know, bit of Sodium. Sal uh, saltiness to it. Yes. So we're just going to make Kool Aid happen on this chicken. And it's really the most beautiful thing. After you squeeze, you can just place it in the cavity and it's going to cook on the outside of the chicken. It'll give the flavor inside. You don't have to use all of them. Make sure you get the wings on the side. So, so we have a pink chicken. This is the blood orange butter chicken. And this goes in the oven at 450 degrees. No for cover? No cover for an hour and a half. It's not going to dry out. Nope. Because we have the butter. Because we brined it and we've got the butter. Yes. So literally... Brine, squeeze, oven. Beautiful. So easy. Okay. Yes. Okay. And timer. And this needs to be an hour and a half. Okay. All right. So for the chicken, I used really simple ingredients, and I started from the farmer's market again. We got our chicken from the farmer that we know. Yep. We rinsed it off. Yep. We put it in the fridge. Yep. And now we got a pot. Now we got a pot. What are we going to do with a pot? We're going to uh, leave the chicken out, and we're going to start a pot with about two inches of water. And we're going to add a cup of salt, and we're going to add the juice of about six blood oranges to the salt and water mixture. Okay. So that's going to create the brine. Okay. So then we bring that to a boil on the stove, and then we... Got no chicken in there. No chicken. We got some water, we got some salt, and we got some blood oranges. Yeah. So then once that's boiling and the salt has kind of dissolved and whatever, sure. we're going to add the chicken and then we're going to cover the chicken the rest of the way in the pot with cold water. Okay. And then we're going to stick it in the fridge for 8 to 24 hours. If you let it go longer than 24 hours, it can get really salty. So I want to make a point that 8 to 24 hours is sort of a magic window in terms of getting the brine and creating that barrier to the moisture of the chicken. Okay. Otherwise, you get the flavor that you don't want and right. the sodium that you don't Yeah, want. a lot of sodium. So after the chicken's done, you can just toss the water. You can toss all the oranges. No big deal. They're all covered in chicken juice anyways. And then you could just place your chicken in a baking dish. And that's when you're going to use your fingers to go underneath the skin and over the breast. And that's where you're going to place your butter. So we've got, you know, half inch thick butter slices and it's organic grass fed butter. So it's butter from grass fed cows, which is far superior. And then we're just going to stick all the butter under the cavity, use the rest of our blood oranges, six to eight blood oranges, and we're going to squeeze it over the top and then pop it in the oven. 450 for an hour and a half, and that's 450 it. 450 for an hour and a half. That's the magic, magic equation. So, cheers to that. I'm getting hungry, aren't you? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. So, the chicken is in the oven. Yeah. I'm so excited because it's going to be so delicious. It's going to be the best chicken you've ever had. Wow. I hope. Can't wait. I hope. So, we're going to make another really wonderful spring centered, very fresh, very sweet, very savory dish and it's sugar snap peas from the farmer's market and they are 
surprisingly sweet and, and what crunchy. I've and crunchy. So what I've done with these is I've de-veined them, mm. and it's basically snapping peas. Thank you. What are we doing? So we're gonna do a glazed sweet pea, sugar snap pea with bacon, honey, wow, and a little bit of apple cider vinegar and some walnut oil. Wow. So we're gonna start with bacon. Okay. We should always start with bacon. Yeah. So let's go over here. Okay. This is all clad. Can I get a sponsorship from all clad for more uh, pans or something? No. All clad. All clad. The chef's choice. That's that was good. <laughs> That's good. Okay. So this is bacon that has just been kind of chopped up. Uh, we've got two inch pieces that I've just done raw, and then we're just going to put this into the pan. Okay, we're giving the bacon a saute in the pan, and we're basically rendering out the fat of the bacon. So this is gonna take about 15 minutes, and okay. we have plenty of time because we've got an hour on the clock for our chicken. All right. And after this is done, we're gonna basically give it a little drain, pull it aside, and then we're gonna start our sugar snap peas. I'm gonna flip. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, spill there it. There we go. Woo! Smell this, first of all. Right. Smell this. Look at that already. Oh my goodness, look at that. Already. Wow. Amazing. Wow. There's light. Absolutely. So this is a reason. Bring everybody Bring in the everyone kitchen. in the kitchen. This is a reason why it's the biggest conversational piece that you can have. Yes. Take advantage of it. Make everyone a part of it, mm -hmm. whether you have guests over or your kids are doing this. This is fantastic. It's it's an experience, absolutely. Good. So we just pulled the bacon. That is some beautiful bacon out of the pan. Mm. Amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and eat some more. It's all right. We've got the leftover grease, and I actually poured off a couple tablespoons because it was just a, a bit much. Okay. We're just going to toss these in. And uh, we're going to give them a stir. I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit. Turn up the heat. And uh, we're going to give these a quick saute. So now let me just show you something actually really, really very important in this. There is a layer on the bottom of the pan. And it's, it's scrapable, but it doesn't come up, OK? So like if you were making gravy. Right. right. So now the next thing you need to do is deglaze the pan. And the only okay. two things that can deglaze a pan are yes. wine mm. or vinegar. Okay. And in this case, we are going to deglaze a pan and we are going to reglaze. So that means that we're going to deglaze by using a vinegar or an acidic content. And then we're going to reglaze by adding it back sugar. But we do not want to waste any of this amazing bacon stuff on the bottom. Right? Okay. Right. All right. So let me grab my vinegar right here. This is about a um, quarter cup. I'm going to add a quarter cup. So watch what happens Look at that. with my spoon. It just comes off. Look at that. And where do you think the flavor goes? Inside those beautiful snappies. In these beautiful snappies. So it's also really important to note too that we do not want to overcook the snappies. These should just be cooked for like five minutes. But you see how clean the pan is now. Yes. That vinegar is a really powerful deglazing agent. Mm. So after we do this. Um, I'm going to actually bring this back up to a boil so that I can see bubbles in the bottom of the sugar snap peas. And these are, you know, these are like simple nuanced steps, but you can do this at home much more simply. Just throw the bacon in, take the bacon out, throw the peas in, add a little vinegar, bring it back to a boil, and then add some honey. Bam. So this is San Marcos Farms. This is raw, unfiltered alfalfa honey. And uh, we're just going to add a reglazing agent back to the peas. A big uh, heaping tablespoon of honey. Okay, oh, there's peas everywhere. Okay, so now, Shelby, I'm adding the reglazing agent. So we deglaze, we're reglazing. Himalayan sea salt. Six to eight turns of that. Fresh black oh. pepper, six to eight turns of that. Uh, so we have 26 minutes still left. Oh my God, that's so good. Okay, snappies are close. What are we doing now? We just have to add the bacon. The bacon. Yes. The awesome bacon. Um, we've already got the bacon grease that we've sauteed lightly, the sugar snappies, and they're very crunchy. They're very fresh, they're sweet. We've used our honey. We've used a little bit of the 
apple cider vinegar to deglaze. So it's ready. Set it aside. Excellent. Okay. Next. Next. All right. So we're going to make some espresso for our dessert. Yes. Excellent. Last course. Good. We have coconut bliss. This is a really great ice cream product. They have all different kinds of flavors. Uh, this is just wonderful. I like to brew a fresh shot of espresso. Don't mind the noise. Grinding. Grinding. Give it a little shake. And pour that into the press. And then I've got my press thing and I'm gonna make even more of a mess. And this is okay, like this is fun about cooking. Just make a mess yes. and it's okay. Absolutely. And then I'm just going to press the one shot button with all of this beautiful mess. And we've, we've done this a couple times before so that we can get uh, a little bit of coffee. We're just going to take a scoop of the coconut ice cream, Coconut Bliss. I let this sit out for about five minutes before I gave it a scoop. And you're going to get that one that fell on the coffee or on the thing. Right? Mm. Fresh and oh. wonderful. You would we're never... Gonna, we're going to edit this so it comes in after the chicken. Right. Okay, good. Mm. So it tastes like vanilla coconut. and coconut, and it just is a wonderful mm. substitute if you're sensitive to dairy. Are you ready for this? What? Now just take a bite of that. Oh, my goodness. And cry. What do we have tonight? We had some... Prosciutto on cucumber with a pear salsa. Mm -hmm. We had um, snap peas mm -hmm. with bacon. Mm -hmm. Amazing. We had chicken that was soaked in a brine mm -hmm. with blood oranges. Mm -hmm. And then we cooked the chicken with some more blood oranges and lots of organic grass-fed butter. Yes. And now we're having... Coconut ice cream. Coconut ice cream. With freshly made espresso. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Cooking class is from Simply Paleo. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Mm. He'll be back after this short break of ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Isn't it wonderful? Mm. Mm. Good. So, all right, my turn. Wow. Oh. Um, so all we did was we scooped the awesome coconut bliss. Uh, yeah, as long as you do a nice quality coffee, it's organic. You took some time to make it. It's not from Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks and you pour it over some coconut milk ice cream. You have an incredible dessert. People are going amazing. to drop their jaws when they taste this like you did. And I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Lauren. Let's summarize. Tonight, I came over. Yeah. We made a cocktail. Yeah. Amazing cocktail. Amazing cocktail. I Thank you. I had never you. had gin before. Never, ever. And I feel like I had never... <laughs> I drank mine way more than yours. You had a refill. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then after we made our cocktail, mm -hmm. we put together some cucumber, prosciutto, uh, uh, a bro, a brochette. Brochette. A brochette. Yes. Of brochette. cucumber, and I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I can't say anything else. It's a cucumber prosciutto brochette. Yes. With, with pear a salsa. pear salsa. And it was amazing. Thank it you. It was amazing. All right. So then after that, we were all involved in cooking the bacon. Yes. Right. And the snap peas. Yes. And, uh, and farmers we, market fresh sugar snap peas. Sugar snap peas. Mm -hmm. And then um, we put a little honey in there once mm -hmm. the bacon was cooked. Mm -hmm. And then we added the snap peas. Yes. And that would made an amazing, again, a very social dish mm -hmm. of being able to talk about everything that's going on. And in, smell. Oh, man. Get aromas. everyone in the kitchen. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, great. And, uh, and then the chicken came out mm -hmm. that we had talked about earlier. And what was the chicken? What did that consist of? So the chicken was a farm fresh chicken with blood oranges and grass fed butter. And it was baked in the oven mm. to its perfect perfectness. Oh man, and it was. Yep. It was amazing. I'm glad you liked it. Oh, crazy good. An incredible evening. Don't and say then, the word moist. Don't you, don't you say it. You know it. what? I had been, I, I had been avoiding it. I and, hate that uh, word. So now, 
It's wet, it's moist, and both terrible. It's dessert. Okay. So here we are. And we've talked about that. Yep. And it's just amazing. And what an incredible evening here with Simply Paleo. Good. I'm glad you liked it. So if anyone else wants to come have a personal cooking class, I am available. You send me an email at lauren at simplypaleo.com. I did this kind of stuff all the time. Not with so many lights and cool props and things like that, but you can come and you can have a good time and we can become best friends. Just like Shelby and I. <laughs> good. We're ready. Chicken ready? Okay. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> we are going to next carve the chicken. What is the resting deal? It's, is it like the same with beef or chicken it, good to go or do you need yeah, to relax? The chicken needs to just chill for a little bit. Yeah, we're just going to let it rest and we're going to bring it over to the cutting board and we're going to carve it up. So the browning that you see, it almost looks burnt. I assure you, it's unbelievably delicious. It's the sugar from the blood oranges. So sugar, mm. when you over barbecue sauce ribs, they burn. Oh, sure. And when you over Color. sugar anything, they get too burnt. So, you know, something like this where you're just adding a little bit of sugar, it just gets that little bit of char and it's wonderful. Mm. So I am going to do another advertisement. This is my Victorinox steel. <laughs> Victorinox steel. So the first thing we're going to do is Look we're going to do the breast. Yeah. So the breastplate has two different sections. There's a bit of cartilage in the middle. You can, uh, Keep the skin together, that's wonderful because it's just so beautiful. So this piece in the middle here, there's a cartilage. And as the oranges come out, you can just place them back into the big dish. dish. Yeah. Um, so the next thing you're gonna do is cut into the breast and it's still quite hot. Paleo is not a boneless chicken. No. You know, sterile piece of chicken. This is like, we're, we, can, we can enjoy mm -hmm. our chicken. Nose to tail. Nose to tail. Nose to tail. Although I don't have the nose or the tail right the now. Next but episode. Yeah, that's the next episode. So um, I'm also going to just find a joint in here and I'm going to cut the leg. I'm breaking the rules. I'm controlling myself by not grabbing more. It is really amazing, as amazing as it looks. All right, so let me do another leg here. So after this, I'm just going to go through and kind of cut off some additional pieces. You know, and you I'm can gonna carve eat and he's going to eat them, and that's great. Oh. It's incredibly moist. Little incredibly sweet. Incredibly delicious. Oh. Everything I've had a taste of tonight has been so amazing. And we haven't even sat down for dinner yet. Here we go. Here we go. Let's eat. Mwah. Right. The gypsies. Right. right. And he falls in love with her. So um, tonight we're right. at gypsy dinner. That's uh -huh. what we're doing. We were, we're already done. We don't, okay. we don't need to eat. We're, we're happy. And we're just joking and just like so joyous. Having this con That everybody wants. Everyone wants to be with us mm -hmm. tonight, enjoying this meal. It's true. We got candles. Yes. And mason jars and, that are blue. And mason jars. <laughs> and chicken with skin. Chicken with skin. And bacon. Uh -huh. Well, this is just incredible, Lauren. Mm. <laughs> Look at this chicken. What an incredible adventure this has been with Simply Paleo this evening. It's really been the most fun having you here. Duh. Duh. I like having people over. I like drinking cocktails that are not paleo. I like cooking paleo meals. I like exploring our natural wonderland that is Santa Barbara. And I'm also a health coach. So don't judge the vodka or the gin cocktail. Don't judge that. But I'm a health coach and I pride myself on either teaching you how to cook or getting you over your hurdles to accomplish your goals. 